Hey, welcome to Project Beats. My name is Joven and this is a continuation of my trigger upgrade video. If you are new, I do a bit of DIY e-drum builds, covers, drum tutorials, and gear reviews. Consider subscribing if you like these videos. So today I continue on my trigger upgrade. The first video before this is where I upgrade the internal trigger of my electric snare drum. Link in the description if you haven't seen it. Just to make it clear, this is not a budget upgrade. My goal is to get a more consistent and accurate response from these trigger upgrade to where I could be comfortable to use it in a performance setting or recording via Superior Drummer 3 if needed. Which I'm happy to report the setup is performing quite well but more on that in a bit. Although building the assembly myself and just sourcing out quality parts, I did save quite a bit. So. Here are the parts that I used for this build. Okay, let me break down this uh, trigger build for the bass drum. This current setup works as it is. My problem or the thing that I want to improve is if I use it as is, like where this plate is attached directly to the 2040 profile, I would only be able to use one, one lug screw. I tried all the possible angles and different setups because I need to push it back as far as that. So, my solution is to build a riser. So this uh, 3D printed riser can go in here, which would in turn enable me to be able to uh, fine tune the height. Let me go and uh, revise all of this. And I will also be, we'll, we'll change this setup. Uh, as you can see, I'm using one. For this end holder, I will be changing it out to a two screw holder right here and a bit longer. Uh, just so it holds the whole thing more securely. This one just goes right in with a bit of uh, encouragement. <laughs> yes, goes right in. So this riser just goes in very easily. Okay, I will remove this first I would, I would change this out to for a reverse uh, setup pull it out of the way yes let's put this on this side first all right let's see screw sticking out it's just easier for me to to lock it this way. So this goes in. Here and deal. I do have a a bigger washer down here. This longer screw with some of the nuts there come with the base plate right here. So I will use that and put that in. If I measured everything correctly, this should go in. 
can stretch this into. Great. Let me see if I can use this rubber washer. I can. And I will. There we go. Okay. Okay, forgive the mess. This is how it looks. I have a towel on there to hold my boundary mic uh, when I'm recording acoustic drums. So the reason I one of the reasons why I used an L bracket so that if I'm using acoustic drums and recording acoustic drums, I will just be able to uh, lightly unthread that or unscrew this, and I can push this whole thing back easily, no problem. And then when I, I return it to electric drums. I can just move it slightly a bit forward here. So here is the setup that I ended up with. Let me just uh, make sure I plug this in. As you know, I don't want to drill holes in my drums. Uh, I want to keep it as is in case I want to sell it in the future or, or, or whatever. I want to keep it in stock condition as much as I could. So I got two cables going in there. Air vent, one is the e-drum trigger and one is the mic cable. There you go. I use a cardboard and I have a a bit of tape there that I measured. I have a line there that I drew there to measure 1.5. So I just move this back a bit slightly. There it is, around there. Just have to refine and lock everything in place and put it back together and uh, I'll play a demo for you. Some update on the snare. On the previous video, I was using Pintech rubber rim. I had been playing with that on and after a few days, here is how it looks. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but yeah. Let me zoom that in. Can you see that? Yes. I. I rotated it like a couple times already and the other parts are also like damaged heavily and when I say I hit hard I'm not joking so <laughs> that's what happened after not even two weeks so throw that out so if you are a hard hitter and you want to get the Pintech rubber rim make sure to get about 50 feet or something because you need to replace that every week um, the first one I was using before that was Joe Becky Rubber Rim. Same story with that. It was dead after about a week. I'm uh, currently using Drumtech Rubber Rim. And first impressions, it's much thicker and reinforced on the correct parts. So I'm hopeful it holds up. I only had this for a couple days and haven't had the time to play yet. But it looks promising and it has tons of great reviews, but we'll see. I did some adjustments on my settings, but um, it's all good. It's working fine. Okay, let's talk about the bass drum trigger. The response is very nice. Before, I had to crank up the sensitivity a lot and I'm still missing some hits, especially on the left pedal when using double pedals. To be fair, I was using side-mounted internal trigger by Joe Becky. I was trying to save some money before and had to make do with it. 
But this is set up way, way better. This is more responsive and more accurate. Plus, you don't get that bad bouncy trampoline feel that's associated with mesh heads. The foam helps a lot with that, which is good. Um, you could build from Roland parts, which you could get from Drumtech. They have a bigger foam pad for their higher-end kick drum pads, but this is easier to build, at least for me. And regarding settings, this is almost plug-and-play. Not much tweak needed with the settings at all, so this is a huge success for me. I can play acoustic drums here in my rental unit and I actually record acoustic drums if and when I have some projects. Some of you may have seen my previous uh, video where I was playing uh, Rock With You. That's Rock With You, an arrangement version by uh, Jesus Molina. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, but the thing is, I cannot have that on full time. But I also need some drum sounds, of course, when teaching online classes. And for my use, this is a finished DIY e-drum build and I'm very happy with the end result. Maybe in the future, I will upgrade and tweak some things here and there. But as it is right now, I'm very happy with this setup. Right now, as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six cymbals, three, one, two, three, um, toms, snare, and then okay. This is another floor tom right here. I'm just using a pad, the, and, and I just put it on top of what, what is actually uh, an acoustic drums right here. So I'm thinking of experimenting with that uh, as a future video. There you have it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. All the parts are listed in the description. Let me know what you think of this setup. And uh, if you can see right here, it's a bit of a teaser. This is um, another review for an upcoming video. This is uh, the lemon uh, symbol. But more on that on another video. If you have um, suggestions or things you like to see, comment them down below and I'll try to get to them if I can. Um, Alright, see you in the next project.